This is Huawei's Mate X Foldable, with an original eye-watering price tag of around €2,150 or $3,200, it's the most expensive phone I've ever come across. But I got this one for just $70, and it's cheap for good reason. While this might be the most amazing foldable, it's also the worst designed. And that hinges on the folding screen being on the outside. Unlike the competition that have their screen fold open from the inside, Huawei has made a phone that seamlessly transitions from phone to tablet. But as you can imagine, this is horrible for durability. There isn't a way to put a case on the phone, and with the screen wrapping around the whole phone, trying to keep that fragile plastic screen free of scratches would be hard. Not to mention dropping the phone on pretty much any angle would destroy the expensive screen. This Mate X's display is ruined, with a big split down the folding section of the screen. So we're going to take it apart and see just how they managed to cram all that tech inside, because it just seems impossibly thin. After the usual treatment on my heat plate, I could begin prying up the back, assuming it was the place to enter from. And I was right, the adhesive came loose with little effort. Lifting up the first plastic panel reveals a battery and a few other things, but still no motherboard. That's got to be on the other side. Many say it's located in the thin bump on the back, but there's no way they could fit the whole brains of the phone between the Huawei logo and the cameras. And I was right. Lifting up the other panel reveals the motherboard and a second battery. While the board does run under the bump on the side, it also fills up a portion of the thinner section too. With the internals now visible, you can see how the phone has been laid out. The motherboard takes up the left, top and bottom sections in the first half, and for the second half you have the speaker and SIM module, with batteries in the middle of both. Each battery is 2250mAh, providing 4500 in total. One of the tamper-proof screws has been touched, along with a loose screw adjacent to it, suggesting someone's been in here. However, none of the other anti-tamper stickers have been void. It's interesting to see how the hinge operates. It looks very different to what we've seen with Samsung. We'll take a closer look at it later, but for now I want to start by disconnecting both batteries. The first one was pretty straightforward to get to. For the second one, we need to remove an extra flex cable first that's blocking access to it. While we're at it, let's take a look at this board. This is the SIM and Nano memory slot for fitting Huawei's expandable storage. Unexpectedly, the display also connects to this board. Down at the lower section is the speaker. Its cable is hiding under a pesky bracket that's not only screwed, but clipped into place. After unfastening the screws, it can be lifted out of place. There is still a small PCB left. It can be pried out, revealing nothing as to what it's for. My guess is that it could be something to tell the phone what position the screen is in. I think it's time we try to get the motherboard out. I'll need to remove the bump to be able to get to it. The question is, how do I do that? I tried removing two screws, one at the top and bottom, but it still didn't want to budge. It looks like we're going to have to dig deeper. After fighting with another clipped in bracket, I could unplug the cameras. It's back to the heat plate where I'll heat up the glass covering the cameras and attempt to pry it off. Hopefully this will help us in getting access to the motherboard. Using a jimmy tool, I'm going to carefully wedge it between the plastic frame and glass, using plastic picks the rest of the way. Mine is cracked in several places, making removal a bit more difficult. I always recommend wearing eye protection when working with glass. Underneath reveals more screws. The problem, they're blocked by the plastic frame. So that has to come out next. As this phone doesn't work, I wasn't taking as much care while doing this part, but this does wrap around to the front screen so you'd need to be incredibly careful if you still have a functioning display. With this part removed, you can see how the fragile plastic screen curves under where the plastic frame sits, and can be easily damaged. 
but we can now access those screws, which are non-magnetic, recessed, and of all different lengths. So not only are they difficult to remove, but it's going to be even harder to get this piece back together. If all this sounds bad enough, you'd have to go through all this just to remove the battery, as it's secured under the main cable running between the two halves. That's no easy battery replacement. With the camera module out, you can see the 40 megapixel wide, 8 megapixel telephoto, 16 megapixel ultra wide, and depth camera. It's finally time we get the motherboard out of the phone, but there's a few flex cables and plenty of screws to take out first. But even with nothing left holding it down, it still felt stuck. Eventually, I freed the board to find Huawei's innovative cooling system. I think it could have done with some more thermal paste. A whole tube is not nearly enough. In all seriousness, that's a lot of thermal paste. This phone must get really hot. With a closer inspection of the board, you'll find the USB-C port, microphones and proximity sensor are all soldered in place further limiting this device's already abysmal repairability. The last thing we're going to take a look at is the hinge. Mine sounds a little crunchy, as I suspect some dirt has made its way inside. After having removed the 16 screws holding it down, we can see how it works. It uses a chain system to link the two halves together. Also present is plenty of dirt, which would explain why the hinge was so difficult to open. While the hinge is disconnected, you can actually bend the screen in the opposite direction. Although this isn't something to try if your screen was in working condition. We've now completely disassembled the Huawei Mate X. It's amazing just how thin they managed to get this device while still maintaining a large battery and expandable storage. However, removing the battery requires risking damaging the display while removing pieces of trim to be able to access the cables blocking the battery. That's not to mention the lack of replacement parts. I couldn't even find any service options from Huawei themselves, making this several thousand dollar phone worthless. Without a new screen to put on it, I'll just reassemble the phone as is. That's the major issue with foldables. The technology is just not good enough. Failure rates are still very high and replacement screens can cost more than a brand new phone, making phones like these quickly become e-waste. With the motherboard and cameras back in, it's time for the antenna. Those non-magnetic screws are really giving me a bad time. The lack of magnetism is likely due to the folding aspect of the phone. There is probably a magnetic sensor to detect the position of the screen, whether it's open or closed. Magnetic screws might interfere with that system, so while annoying, it stands to reason. Next to go in are the metal brackets, which are clipped and screwed into place. After which, the SIM reader can be reinstalled and have its several flex cables reattached. Once its brackets are back in place, I can move down to the lower portion of the phone, where I can install the speaker and its appropriate hardware. After reconnecting the battery, the last thing left to do is reinstall the two rear panels. Of course, if this was a repair, we would attach some adhesive first. And with that, we're done. So this is it, the Huawei Mate X. While not in a functional state, it's been intriguing to see its internals and find out how such a device is constructed. It's a shame there isn't really an economical way to repair it, but that's the case with most foldable phones. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the Teardown and Repair Assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.